everyone. Welcome to Everywhere Book Fest. It's great to connect with everyone since it's impossible to travel these days. But I would like to take you on a virtual vacation to my neighborhood. Oh, hello everyone. Welcome to Busan, South Korea. My name is Kim Hansu. I'm the co-author of a band of book club, a graphic novel about Korea. I want you to feel at home here, so my friend and I will help you see the sights, taste the food, play games, and learn the language. Let me introduce you. Hello, everyone. My name is Robin Ha. I'm the cartoonist of Almost American Girl. Thank you for having me. I hope you guys are having fun tuning into Everywhere Book Fest. Hi everyone, my name is Erin Yoon, and I'm the author of the middle grade book, Pippa Park Raises Her Game, which came out earlier this year in February. And I am just so excited to be participating in Everywhere Book Fest, and I'm so glad that y'all are here to virtually join me. Let's check in with Robin. So this book, Almost American Girl, is a graphic novel memoir about myself as a 14-year-old moving from Seoul, Korea to Huntsville, Alabama. Um, so in this book, I talk a lot about how it was like to be growing up in Korea and also moving and cultural um, shock and language barrier that I experienced in Huntsville, Alabama. And in the beginning of this book, I talk about some of the very favorite things about growing up in Korea. And one of them was the street food. So um, I grew up in Seoul where there's so many different type of street food available. You walk down the street and every corner there is something to eat. And one of the favorite thing I used to eat was hot dog. And also I wrote this cookbook, which came about about four years ago. And in this cookbook, I have a recipe of hot dog, which we're going to make together today. Let's check in with Erin. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make one of my personal favorite dishes, kimchi chigae. And since I haven't eaten anything today, I'm eager to get started. First, let me show you a fun Korean game called Omok. You can find this game everywhere, on mountains and in parks. It looks complicated, but it's actually very easy to learn. There is a board with white stones and black stones. I will be a black, you can be a white. We will take turns putting stone on the board. O means five, so you have to get five in a row. You can go on any intersections. I will put my stone here. I block your way. Oh, I will block here. Uh, I'll put stone here. Even though put this stone here, I will put this. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I won! I got a five stones. Since you can't come play in the gazebo, here's how to play at home. You just need some grip paper and uh, two different colored pens. Oh, let's play again. Right. Put. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, you got a five in a row. Congratulations. You did a good job. So hot dog is basically a fried dough um, that has brown sugar and nuts in them. So if you guys are familiar with maybe pupusa, which is a Salvadorian dish, it's very similar to that. Um, so we're going to make that today. 
and I'm gonna actually follow the recipe that I wrote in this uh, cook Korean cookbook. And uh, you can uh, get these books, Almost American Girl, or the Cook Korean from any of your local bookstores. Um, if you're not sure about what bookstores uh, have these and you can order them online, you can go to indiebound.org and just search on your zip code and it'll show you all the independent bookstores around your neighborhood. Let's go over the ingredient list. So to make hotak, you need one cup of all-purpose flour, one cup of glutinous rice flour, or also called uh, sweet rice flour, and one cup of room temperature milk, a tablespoon of instant yeast, or one packet of instant yeast, you need one teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of sugar, and one teaspoon of vegetable oil. And to make the filling that's going to go into the dough, we're going to make the traditional brown, uh, brown sugar with nuts uh, filling. Um, you can also make the filling with whatever ingredient you like. So in Korea, the, the brown rice and the nuts is the traditional filling. But these days, you can, you can find the uh, sweet potato noodle, the chapche noodle with uh, meat filling too. Those are really, both of them are delicious. Um, but today, we're going to go with the traditional filling, which is the brown, rice, uh, brown sugar and nuts. So traditionally, you, uh, you're supposed to use um, pine nuts but I happen to have a lot of uh, walnuts for baking, which I got from Trader Joe's, so we're gonna just use that. So I have uh, walnuts uh, crushed, and I have about half a cup of brown sugar, and you're gonna use uh, one teaspoon of ground uh, cinnamon, and one teaspoon of salt. So that is all you need for the filling. Um, I have used other ingredients like mozzarella cheese and tomato sauce and sausage as a filling. It's kind of like the pizza version of hot dog. You can make it a savory or sweet. You can even put uh, jam in it uh, or peanut butter in it. I've done that PB&J version of hot dog. So, you know, you can just use your imagination and experiment and you might find even the better, more delicious recipe for you. So um, the basic ingredient is basically um, sweet rice flour, all-purpose flour, yeast, salt and sugar, and oil for the dough. And for the filling, you need brown sugar and crushed nut of your choice, and cinnamon, uh, ground the cinnamon, and salt. First, I'm gonna measure the dry ingredient and mix the dry ingredient first. And I use fork to kind of mix it all together. Mix in the milk. I'm gonna add in one teaspoon of vegetable oil. And then you're gonna mix it very thoroughly. Once it's all mixed in, it looks like this. You're gonna cover it either with a plate or you can use a serrain wrap. And just cover it the whole thing like that. And then you can leave it in room temperature for two and a half hour total. So after an hour and a half, you're gonna come back, fluff it, cover it again, and leave it for one more hour. So the dough is rising. And in the meantime, I would like to give you some sneak peeks of my comic books. So Almost, Almost American Girl is a graphic novel memoir. It came out uh, this year in January 28th. And Cook Korean, a comic book with recipe is a cookbook comic book, which came out on uh, July of 2016. So, Almost American Girl is a memoir about uh, myself as a 14 year old moving from Seoul, Korea to Huntsville, Alabama. So when I moved here, uh, my mom told me that we're going on a vacation and when we got here, she got married and we never went back. So it was a very shocking uh, challenging time for me to be adjusting 
to a new life um, and also I didn't speak any English so I had to learn to speak English um, also my mom got married so I had all the step family that I need to get used to living with so it was a very tough time but also um, you know it made me who I am now it made me a Korean American and I am happy that I got to tell my story through this comic book so in the beginning of this book, I talk about uh, some, of the some of the things I used to do in my free time as a middle schooler in Seoul, Korea. So this is the part that I talk about um, my favorite activities. So I used to play a lot of jump jumping rope with uh, my school friends. And after school, would go get like these yummy treats from the street. So like, I, I mean, that was one of my favorite part of Korea and I still miss that a lot. Um, so hot dog is right here. So it's basically gonna look like a round uh, flat dough, very hot. Uh, it tastes delicious when it just comes off of the griddle. Um, and then also I would like to go to cafes and order papingsu, which is a shaved rice. Um, Oh, shaved ice <laughs> with a uh, red bean paste and rice cake and fruits and other sweets on top and you mix it together it's really delicious uh, and also uh, I used to go to a place called Manhabang a lot which is basically a rental comic book rental place so uh, after school all of my friends and I would go and borrow all kinds of different comic book and read it and I used to draw a lot of fan art of those comic books and watch a lot of the animated shows on TV and I'll show you a little more details so this is the part that my mom tells me that we're not going back <laughs> it was very shocking and also very sad because I lost contact with all my friends back in Korea and some parts are about my memory as a child growing up in Korea um, I was also uh, the only daughter of a single mother and uh, in Korea it's uh, it's tough for a single mother to raise a child it's culturally very uh, frowned upon. So I talk about that a lot in my memoir. Yep. So I hope you get a chance to read this book. It's called Almost American Girl. And I also would like to talk about this book, Cook Korean, a comic book with recipes. This came out in July of 2016. So this book is pretty interesting in a way that you can actually learn to make Korean food by reading this book. And there are 64 very easy and yummy and delicious and healthy recipes that you can cook. Um, so there's some kimchi recipes here. And all kinds of side dishes and meat dishes like this is one of my favorite food to make it's very easy chicken chili stew um, and the recipe that we're using today it's in here so this uh, chapter is uh, street food snacks and street food chapter eight so this uh, brown sugar pancake hot dog is what we're making and here is the ingredient list it's a very simple recipe and we've done this part right now so you we mix all the dry ingredient with uh, room temperature milk so if you are using milk that just came out of the refrigerator you could just uh, microwave it for 15 to 20 seconds to make it like a room temperature and there you mixed it and then you're gonna leave it on a room temperature for an hour and a half and then you're gonna come back and fluff it and then 
uh, leave it again for an hour. Next, Ellen will teach how to make a kimchi jjigae. I love it! So for those of you who might not have ever had kimchi jjigae before, it's a traditional and very delicious Korean stew where the focus is on the kimchi, the star ingredient. And I'm half Korean and as a child, I remember adoring this dish so much that it was kind of like ice cream and that I just never got tired of it. So I'm excited to share this dish with all of you. So to start, I'm just gonna walk you through the ingredients needed for kimchi jjigae. You'll need a cup or two of kimchi chopped up into manageable pieces, along with the liquid that it comes with the brine. Then you'll need a couple slices of thick pork belly sliced into bite-sized chunks, about a package of firm tofu, some gochujang, which is just a Korean chili paste that's a little bit mild, but also still brings a little bit of heat and salt. And then gochugaru, which is the heat component that I have here today and adds a nice kick to any dish, along with some green onion, onion, garlic, and then we have a packet of dried anchovy that I'm using for the broth, but if you want to make just a traditional anchovy broth, you can use dry anchovies with the guts removed and toss them into some water. Just make sure to strain them out afterwards. Okay, so now that we have all of our ingredients prepared, let's start on the soup. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to make the broth. Again, I'm just using one of these convenient little dry anchovy packs because they are what was at the store closest to me. Um, but if you have anchovies, you can use about 12 of those to make the broth as well. And you just toss them into the pot and boil until the stock becomes a pale yellow color. And so mine has been going for about 15 minutes now. And while it finishes up, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about my book. So Pippa Park races her game is that a Korean American girl named Pippa, who receives a mysterious basketball scholarship to her local private school and becomes determined to use this opportunity as a chance to reinvent herself, both to impress her fancy new classmates, as well as an impossibly cute crush on the side. It's a book about the ups and downs of family, navigating friendships, first crushes, and above everything else, it's about one girl who in trying to fit in, learns that maybe she's meant to stand out instead. And of course, the book has tons of Korean food as well, including kimchi jjigae, so let's get back to that. So our stock has almost finished boiling, and as it just finishes up, I want to chop up this kimchi into a little bit more of some bite-sized chunks. I've done most of this beforehand, but just finishing up on this now. And so the star of the dish is the kimchi, so you want to make sure that it's good quality. My mom actually relies solely on the flavor of the kimchi when making this dish, but I like to add a little bit of gochujang and gochugaru as well for heat and flavor. So we're just going to chop that up like this. And in Pippa Park, Pippa's brother-in-law is the one who actually uh, makes food for the family, and his go-to is kimchi jjigae, which is, he always makes it delicious. Um, but Pippa in one chapter actually tries to recreate this dish and it doesn't go as great for her. By the end, her eyes are burning with all the spices that she used and it's a little bit of a disaster, so we'll try to avoid that. But in general, making kimchi jjigae is pretty easy and a surefire step to making good stew is just starting with good kimchi. So my mom actually um, got her kimchi all the way from Korea sent by her sister. We didn't have that luxury, but I like this kimchi still. Okay, so we're just gonna take our kimchi and we're gonna plop it into our stock, just like so. So take your cutting board and then capture some of that excess liquid draining off. Slide your kimchi into the pot, like that, and then give it a good stir. And this is just gonna go back on the stove top while we prepare the rest of our mix-in. So this is actually my favorite part, is just preparing the mix-ins. And for time, I've already cut up most of these things already. But I'll just walk you through what we're doing. So of course, we have our pork belly that we're going to add. But if you don't happen to have pork belly on you, then you can always use chopped up hot dogs, which might sound weird, but as a kid, I really like chopped up hot dogs in my kimchi jjigae. So any kind of meat alternative works. Um, then we're going to add in our thick slices of tofu as well. 
we're gonna save our green onions for afterwards. We're gonna take our garlic and our onions, about a heaping tablespoon of gochujang, as well as a teaspoon of our gochugaru. We're all gonna take this over to the kitchen. And there's actually quite a lot of Korean food in the park racer game, from dakboki to chapche to walnut cakes filled with red beans. In fact, I remember my editor asking at one stage whether I was a food writer, and I replied, no, I was just really, really hungry the entire time I was writing this book. But although Food Park isn't a book about food by any means, I do think I am drawn to writing about food. It just really kind of connects me to my childhood in a way that I find really comforting. It's almost like even though outside of the house, Pippa might have to deal with anonymous cyber bullies or intimidating boys or just juggling a dozen different responsibilities. But as soon as she walks inside the home, I know that she's gonna come back to really amazing scents and even better tasting foods. There's actually one bit early on in the book where Pippa gets into a huge fight about her failing algebra grades with her sister. And afterwards, her brother-in-law comes by and he offers her snack money to go buy some chocolate pies. But Pippa says that while this is a nice gesture, snacks can't necessarily solve every problem in the world. And while that's certainly true, that food can't solve every problem, I think that certain comfort foods, like this kimchi chige, can at least make you forget about them for a while. So now that we have all of our mix-ins, we're just going to head over to the kitchen. So follow me. So our kimchi has been simmering in the anchovy broth, and now we're just going to add in our pork belly. So we're just going to toss that right into the bowl, give that a little mix. And then we're going to wait until this starts to boil and yum. It's already starting to smell so good in here. I don't know about y'all, but I've been cooking nonstop now that I'm not leaving the house. I already cooked a good deal before, but now I've just been making so many soups, stews, and baked goods that my roommates are beginning to probably think that I've just been like weird or something. I don't know, but I have no regrets about the amount of baking I've been doing. So we're just gonna wait until that boils. And then once it does boil, you're gonna crank it down to a simmer so that everybody in the pot kind of makes friends with each other. And that's when we'll toss in our onion and garlic as well as our heaping tablespoon full of gochujang, just directly into the pot. And then you're gonna add your gochugaru as well, just about a teaspoon of that. First, I'm going to stir in the gochujang. And then we're going to wait just a little bit on the tofu and the white, uh, and the green onions. So I usually toss my green onions right when the dish is done. And I usually wait until about maybe like 10 minutes after this has been cooking to add in the tofu. So we'll just kind of turn down the heat on here because now it's boiling. And so we'll turn that down to a simmer. And then we'll cook that for about 10 to 15 more minutes until the pork has started to get really tender. And then that's when you'll add in your tofu and your green onions. And then you're basically done. You just serve with a bowl of rice and enjoy. So we're gonna wait for this to cook a little bit before we're adding in our tofu. And so I'll see y'all in a second. Now let's look at books by Korean authors. This is my comic band book club. It's the true story of my Carly's life. I thought I was just drawing an ordinary book club, but I accidentally became the youngest member of an underground illegal reading club that was being haunted by the KCIA. At the same time, I was learning how to make new friends and meeting voice. I was also learning from the police. I learned about the military coups Molotov cocktails, and the fact that I'd grown up in a dictatorship without even knowing it. It's a story about how young people can change the world for the better. It has comedy, drama, romance, and action. It's one of the best reviewed books of the year. It has three star reviews. Actually, the only comic to get more start review is Lovins. 
So let's check out how her hot dog is coming. All right, so the dough is ready. Now you can see how much it has risen. Look at it. And it smells like yeast, that kind of yeasty smell. So you're gonna basically comb it together like that. And this dough can make about eight pancakes, eight hotdog. All right. So you can already see how sticky this dough is, right? So you'd have to um, put some oil on your hand so it doesn't like stick too much to your hand. And I wanna show you this filling that I made. So this is half cup of brown sugar and a half cup of crushed nut one teaspoon of ground cinnamon and one teaspoon of salt all mixed together all right so let's start putting it together so i'm gonna this is just a little bowl of uh, vegetable oil so i'm gonna rub it all on my hands nicely coated and then i'm gonna just go in there grab about this much of the dough and you're gonna just kind of bounce it back and forth in your palm like that to make it a round bowl shape. Okay, and then you're gonna flatten it out on your hand like that. And you're gonna put about two tablespoons of the filling inside like that. And then you're gonna put it together. It's a messy process, so just uh, go with it. There's no other way to make this but get all your hands dirty or full of dough. So you close it like that and you go back and forth, back and forth like that. Make sure they're all together. Okay, now it's done. And you're gonna put more oil on this baking sheet or you can even just put it on a plate and, um, and then you're gonna plop it down there so you know the reason you put this oil here is because you don't want it to be too sticky all right so it's time for frying um, I've made all the dough you're gonna put plenty of uh, frying oil like peanut oil vegetable oil uh, into the pan and get it really hot okay um, and once it's hot then you're gonna scoop one of them and plop it in and then I'm gonna do two at a time all right and I recommend eating them right off the griddle or the frying pan um, but be careful because the brown sugar melts and it's gonna be like molten lava coming out of the dough So just be aware of that, but it tastes delicious when it's super hot right off the pan So you're gonna leave it there to cook for a minute or two and then You're gonna flip it And then once you flip it, you're gonna squish it down gently to make it flatter. Ooh. And make sure the uncooked dough doesn't touch each other because they might stick together and the inside might come out. Yep. So you're gonna cook both sides, maybe two to three minutes each. Yep. So you're gonna be frying once this is done. You can put it on a, a drying rack so they don't get too soggy and the outside will be staying crispy. And you're gonna keep frying the rest of the pancake. So this is hot dog. And let's taste it. Mmm, hot dog is delicious. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes and our kimchi chige is done and my apartment smells beautiful. And so come closer and take a little look at this. 
So here's our finished kimchi chige after it was done boiling. And now I'm just gonna take a bite of this. Mmm, that tastes so good. It's warm and flavorful and that sourness from the kimchi is coming through. It just feels really nourishing and comforting and as soon as the camera's off, I can't wait to scarf this whole bowl down. But for now, I just wanted to say how much I enjoyed making kimchi chige with all of y'all. I know I had a lot of fun, so I hope you did as well. And I only wish the technology existed that you could come over here and taste a little bit of this too. So I really do encourage you to try this on your own at home. We'll have the recipe on my website as well in case you want to follow along there. Like I mentioned earlier, Put Park released in February, so it's now available to order at your favorite indie or Barnes and Nobles. Plus, if you go to www.pipart.com, you'll find, you'll find tons of additional resources like word searches, fill in the story games, language arts guides, and even an escape Pippa's bedroom activity, along with things like worksheets to fill out your own book theme playlist. So please check it out there. I was actually in the middle of my debut tour when um, schools started shutting down from the coronavirus. So I'm just really grateful for the people behind Everywhere Book Fest for putting this really special event together and organizing it. I know I really appreciate it, so I hope all of you watching are having a fun time as well. When you travel to Korea, it's good to read Korean. My husband will teach you. Hi everyone, my name is Ryan and I'm not a Korean author, but I have been lucky enough to work on a lot of great books about Korea. I worked on Band Book Club as well as Student Ambassador The Missing Dragon, which is coming this summer from Iron Circus Comics. But one of the comics I'm most famous for is Learn to Read Korean in 15 Minutes. And the reason this went so viral is because Korean is actually a very easy language to learn. It's not like other languages that uh, evolved over thousands of years. This one man named King Sejong sat down and invented an alphabet uh, that works together and is very easy to learn. And you can learn it in 15 minutes. And I, this comic is on my website at ryanestrada.com that you can read for free and study for 15 minutes. So let me just give you a quick rundown of how it's done. Let's start with 11 basic letters. Uh, now these are not the real names, but these are the names that I made up that helped me because that's what they look like. The one that's like a zero, nothing. It makes an, uh, no sound. One looks like a bucket full of water, B. The one looks like a door, makes a D sound. The one that looks like a gun, makes a G sound. The one that looks like a rattlesnake is R. Map, makes M. The one that looks like a little cartoon nose, makes an N sound. The one that looks like a symbol for part two, P. And the little mountain, summit, uh, makes an S sound. The only two vowels we gotta worry about right now, if it stands straight up like a tree, E. If it goes on the side like a brook, uh. So if you can remember those 11 letters, and again, you can study this on my website, you can have most of the pieces that you need. So let's put these together. In Korean, you kind of squish uh, one uh, consonant and one vowel together to make a sound. So again, this is, makes no sound, so you just say E. Put a B together, it says B, D, G, D. Me, ni, pi, shi. Very easy. And you can also put a little, uh, an extra consonant at the end. So b plus e plus n equals bean. Bu, u, k, book. Now what's that? There's a little extra symbol there. You can make some extra sounds just by kicking it up a notch, okay? See the g? You add another little line and it becomes a k. G, k. Add another little line to the d, becomes t. This is easy to remember because of et. E makes a T sound, D, T. Now, the nothing sound, you add a little hat on this guy, becomes H. Very easy. Now, there's two uh, lines that you can add to the summit. This makes S. Add another line, becomes J. One more, it becomes CH. S, J, CH. You can also add another, uh, another little dash to uh, the vowels. It can go up front or far away. Uh, ah. You can also have two trees, and it can go before or after. Eh, ah. Now, if you have the brook, you can put it over, o, or at the root, u. Um, there's a couple other rules that you need to know. 
if you just add if there's two of the same one it just strengthens sound b b uh you can add two different vowels these just make uh the sounds from water wet wag we and wonder if you add uh two of the notches it just adds a little y sound ya ya ye ye yo you uh, there are three letters that make a different sound if you put them at the end of a syllable. Uh, the nothing, this is very good because it says nothing. The mm, if it's at the end, then it becomes mm. If you put summit at the end of a syllable, it becomes t. If you put the rattlesnake, it becomes l. And that's pretty much all the rules that you need. Uh, like I said, you just take these letters and put them together. Each uh, little block needs at least uh, one of each, and then you can add one more at the end. So it's it, that's pretty much the only way they go, and each one makes a syllable. So let's practice. Bat, to, man, Batman. Now this one, remember we added a little extra dash, so it becomes T. There's two of these, and that's over the brook. So to to, that's a rattlesnake. Makes the exact same sound, Totoro. Totoro. Uh, here's a easy one, very just one syllable, M for map, and it goes over Mo. Now there's another map, so we know the sound. At map makes M. That's far away from the tree. Ma, rattlesnake plus tree, ri, no sound, over the root. Mario. And it's Mario. N for the nose, trust plus a tree makes knee, M for map plus over the brook, Nemo. And the rest of these are pretty easy. Harry Potter, Elmo, Mickey, Gollum. So that is how you learn Korean. Uh, it it take a few more minutes to master it, but like I said, go to ryanstrata.com. You can get that comic for free. Band Book Club is coming to your bookstores very soon. And this summer, check out Student Ambassador, which actually uh, has a whole scene in it where these characters have to learn Korean using the same skills uh, and use what they learn in Korean to solve a mystery. So both of these are fun. I hope you check them out when they come out in bookstores. Get this for free right now, you know, just for fun. And uh, thank you for listening uh, to the Everywhere Book Fest panel with... Uh, all of our wonderful guests. Thank you. Every character I write holds a special piece of my heart, but Pill Park holds a particularly special piece of my heart. She's a mix of awkward and confident, spunky yet insecure. She wants to know others, but is reluctant to let others know her. She makes wrong choices, but always tries to do right. She has endeared herself to me totally, and I hope she has a chance to endear herself to some of y'all as well. Thank you so much for watching and please be safe everyone. And once again, my name is Robin Ha. I'm the author and the illustrator of Almost American Girl and hope you guys get a chance to read my book. Thank you so much. Bye! Thank you so much for watching our video. I hope you enjoyed your vacation in Korea. I hope you enjoy reading Band Book Club. Wow! Goodbye!